my fellow stock trading masters, this is Lance Jepson with GorillaStockTrading.com. All right, you guys, I'm going to talk about the petrodollar trade. Now, look at this graphic here for a little bit, okay? Who is threatening whom? Each of the 45 black dots is a U.S. military base, okay? Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not anti-U.S. I'm not anti-U.S. military. I'm not in any way for Iran, okay, and its system and its, you know, how it brings its whole Muslim and religion into its government. I mean, no, 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 okay? But look at this map. These are military bases in the region, okay? Now, the thinking mind says... How do we have, how does the U.S. have that much money to be able to set up that many military bases like that? And that's just in a very small section of the Middle East. How do we have so much money to be able to have all these military bases here? Okay, and what you're told in the mainstream media is it's because you're part of America. You work hard. You go to work every day. You pay your taxes. That's why. Because the U.S. economy is so much bigger than everybody else. And the people are good, law-abiding citizens. They work hard. They pay their taxes to the government. And it's just a really good system because it works for the little guy. And when things work for the little guy, okay, it works for the government as a whole. You know, God bless America. Okay, now, again, you guys, I'm not anti-America. I love my country, okay? But I'm just telling you the facts here. That's what you're told about this, okay? But what you're not told is the truth, okay? This is all possible because of the petrodollar, all right? Now, um, the petrodollar system was... Uh, came into being in the 1970s um, and it requires all oil sales to be transacted in U.S. dollars. I know, pretty crazy, right? Wow. You know, I mean, I, who knew that we had such a stranglehold on like all oil? I mean, it's just unbelievable, right? But that was the deal that was reached. Um, in the mid-1970s, a deal was reached between the oil-producing nations of OPEC and the U.S., and then later, the deal was expanded out with other nations, okay? Now, according to this deal, every barrel of oil produced in the global markets by anyone must be purchased with U.S. dollars, so any country around the world that wanted to purchase oil, okay, had to exchange its national currency for U.S. dollars, okay? So if you want to purchase oil, you need to get your hands on U.S. dollars. That's the reality of other countries. Hey, we need to get our hands on U.S. dollars. Now, there's multiple ways to do this. You could exchange your national currency for U.S. dollars and then use those U.S. dollars to go and purchase oil, okay? But that's pretty costly, and the and the banks charge a pretty good amount of money to, to do that, okay? So what a lot of countries do, and it's the preferable method, that is to produce something that the U.S. people want and export it to the U.S., okay, in exchange for U.S. dollars, and then use those U.S. dollars to buy oil, right? So the whole idea, if you're going to grow your economy, okay, it has to grow through energy, okay? You're not going to be growing your economy without getting your hands on more oil, without being able to produce more energy, okay? And to get that energy that you need, okay, to get that oil to grow the economy of your country, to get that energy, to get that oil that you need, you first must get U.S. dollars. Unbelievable, right? It's just amazing. But that's the petrodollar trade. Now, 
Um, let's just take, for example, Japan. Okay, Japan must convert its yen into U.S. dollars before it can buy a barrel of oil. Right? In Mexico, they must convert their peso into U.S. dollars in order to buy oil. Okay, so this is why you've got so many Asian countries which are dependent on an exporting strategy to grow their economies. Okay. It takes energy and oil to grow an economy. So Japan, for example, has very few natural resources, including oil. Okay, So they must import large amounts of oil. This means that they must have lots and lots of US dollars. So Japan manufactures a Honda, ships it here to the US, receives payment in US dollars, Okay for that product and then it could use those US dollars to purchase oil. Now the petrodollar system has proven to be very beneficial to the US economy since the 1970s. Many of the oil producing nations agreed not only to sell their oil in exchange for US dollars instead of their own currency, okay, but they also agreed to take those excess profits and then invest them back into the safety of US government bonds. Okay? So in essence, the US receives a double loan out of every single barrel of oil that's sold worldwide. I mean, that's just incredible, you guys. So every global oil transaction, every barrel of oil that is sold on the world markets increases the demand for US dollars and it also increases the demand for US debt securities or bonds okay so again just think about that for a second think let me let me back up a little bit these oil producing countries not only agreed to sell their oil in exchange for US dollars instead of their own currency okay but they also agreed to take their excess profits and then invest them back into the safety of US government bonds. Okay, what are US government bonds? That's US debt. Okay, so that every oil that's sold increases the demand for the US dollar and the demand to buy up our debt. Okay? Okay, so think about that for a second. So that means that having oil priced in dollars means that the US can print money okay and we can use that money that we just print right we can use that money to buy oil with it okay we could literally the US is the only country that can do this we can literally print money and use it to buy oil okay the US can print money to buy oil and then have the oil producers hold the debt that was created by printing the money in the first place. Okay, that's incredible. What other nation on earth can do that? Okay, let me say that again. The U.S., okay, having oil priced in U.S. dollars means that, that the U.S. can print money to buy oil, okay, and then have the oil producers that we bought the oil from hold the debt that was created by printing the money in the first place. What other country has that incredible deal? None, folks. None. That's unbelievable. So the U.S. literally prints money to buy oil, okay, and then have, and then those that sold us the oil, okay, will turn around and hold the debt for us for the money that we printed to buy the oil in the first place. Unbelievable. Okay, now are you starting to see why we're able to set up all these military bases like this? And this, and this is just a small section of like the map. Think about all the billions and billions of dollars to staff these and the equipment, okay, and the logistics of shipping things here. Think about all the money that takes, okay? How would, how would any country have, the, have that much money to do that, okay? So, as you can imagine, the U.S. government is thrilled with the petrodollar trade, okay, and has been for decades. Now, the, the U.S. government will do everything in its power to keep the petro 
dollar trade intact. And I don't need to explain to you why. I mean, you just heard why. It's unbelievable deal, right? We're the only country in the world that has that deal, okay? But here's the problem. The rest of the world is not happy with that deal at all, okay? And they figured that out. And they're starting to leave the dollar, okay? They're starting to transact oil in other currencies than the dollar. Now, you know, and one of these countries... Iran. Hmm. Just a coincidence? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, now, but guess what? Other countries are also moving off of transacting oil in the U.S. dollar. Ready for this list? Iran, Syria, North Korea, and Venezuela. Okay. Now, these countries that I just mentioned, those are the exact same countries that President Bush termed the axis of evil. Hmm, just a coincidence? I don't know. It's a pretty big coincidence. Okay? Now, when Iraq tried to move its oil sales away from the dollar and into the euro in 2002, okay, the U.S. military moved in shortly thereafter. Now, I know, I know you guys are saying, oh, come on, Lance, we didn't do it over the petrodollar trade. You know, there were weapons of mass uh, destruction, we were told. We all thought that. We were just hoodwinked. Oops, our bad. We went over there. There were no weapons of mass destruction, but the guy was a dictator and mean to his people anyways, right? Right. I'm just saying, okay? No. If that was the case, then why? Why? Within days of the U.S. military moving into Baghdad, within days, why was the petrodollar trade put back into place? Why was that one of the first things that they did? Was, per, was, was within days of our troops moving into Baghdad, one of the first things that they put back in place was the petrodollar trade. And people say, we went over to Iraq and we didn't get anything out of it. We should have looted their oil, you know, something. We spent all those billions of dollars for nothing. We didn't get no oil out of it. Well, they lied to us, wink, wink. We're just a good country. We don't like people that are being a dictator to their people and, you know, like abusing them like he was. So that's what other country is that good that would be willing to go over and spend billions and help free a country and not ask for anything in return like their oil. God bless America. Not. Okay, that didn't happen like that at all. One of the first things that was done by the military was to put, was to get control of those oil fields and put the petrodollar trade back in place. Okay? And yet, you and I never heard about that in the media. Where was Fox News talking about that? Hmm. Where was CNN talking about that? And putting the petrodollar trade back in place was one of the first things they did. We never heard anything about that. Hmm, very interesting, huh? All right, guys. So the U.S. government knows that when the petrodollar system begins to completely break down, the U.S. dollar will begin its death spiral, okay? Because what's going to happen, basically, is that there's going to be too many U.S. dollars. Think about all of the surplus U.S. dollars that have been printed and printed and printed and printed, but there's artificial demand buying up those U.S. dollars in other countries for every barrel of oil that's traded, okay? And then and then they're taking their excess profits and buying U.S. debt with it, okay? Once that unravels and countries go off the petrodollar, countries say, no, we're not going to trade oil in U.S. dollars. We're going to trade it in our currency or in this currency, okay? Once countries move off of that, okay, then the demand for U.S. dollars vanishes, and now we've got a huge surplus of U.S. dollars, okay? We don't have the demand there for U.S. dollars anymore, and we don't have the demand for our debt or for our bonds there, okay? And as a result, hyperinflation is going to take place, right? It's too many dollars chasing too few goods, Okay, that's what leads to hyperinflation. We're going to have too many dollars. The U.S. economy will be flooded with, with, with gobs and gobs and gobs of money. Okay, when the petrodollar system breaks down. 
okay? And that's why the U.S. government will fight and try to keep the petrodollar system in place. And I don't blame them, okay? Now, right now, right now, the U.S. dollar has a permission slip to print all the U.S. dollars it wants to print, okay? The Federal Reserve, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Ben Bernanke can print as many dollars as he wants, and the value of the U.S. dollar will not go down very much because of the global demand for the U.S. dollar because of the petrodollar trade. Now, the reason that there's this demand for the U.S. dollar, because the petro oil trade, right, because, because these countries need those U.S. dollars to, to buy oil with, right? Okay, so, so, so because the world needs dollars to buy oil, okay, the U.S. has a license to print as much money as it wants. Okay, it's that simple. So the Fed can print away knowing that the demand for U.S. dollars, okay, and U.S. debt will remain strong enough to prevent hyperinflation. All right? Now, here's the problem. When OPEC and other major oil players decide to pull the plug on the petrodollar trade and they start conducting their oil sales in their own currency or, or, or a different currency, then the artificial demand for the dollar will decrease. And without that demand for U.S. dollars, okay, hordes of excess dollars will come back to the U.S., creating hyperinflation, and it will destroy the value of the U.S. dollar. Okay, when the petro dollar system falls apart, okay, interest rates will skyrocket, and the U.S. economy will crash. Now, here's the scary thing. Here's the scary thing, you guys. China and Russia, back in 2010, already moved away from the U.S. dollar in the oil trade, okay? But China and Germany just announced that they were going to do it last week, okay? So, this is a little frightening, okay? Um, I posted this on Wall Street TV, okay? And, you know, this is huge, okay? Um in this article right here, just posted a couple weeks ago. Okay, here it is. On September 12th, the dollar is no longer primary oil currency as China begins to sell oil using the yuan. Look at that, you guys. September 12th, 2012. So we're starting to see countries have gotten smart about the whole petrodollar trade and they're moving away from, okay, trading oil in U.S. dollars. Now, Pastor Lindsey Williams, okay, former minister to the global oil companies during the building of the Alaskan pipeline, announced the most significant event to affect the U.S. dollar since its inception as a currency. For the first time since the 1970s, when Harry Kissinger forged a trade agreement with the Royal House of Saudi to sell oil using only U.S. dollars, China announced its intention to bypass the dollar for global oil customers and begin selling the commodity using their own currency. And here's what Lindsey Williams quoted as saying, the most significant day in the history of the American dollar since its inception happened on Thursday, September 6th. On that day, something took place that is going to affect your life, your family, your dinner table more than you can possibly imagine. Okay, Here's another quote in an interview with Natty Bumpo on the Just Measures radio network. Okay, on Thursday, September 6, just a few days ago, China made the official announcement. China said on that day, our banking system is ready, all of our communication systems are ready, all of the transfer systems are ready, and, and as of that day, Thursday, September 6, any nation in the world that wishes from this point on to buy, sell, or trade cool, crude oil can do so using the Chinese currency, not the American dollar. Oh my God. Okay, guy. Our, all right, guys, but it gets even worse. All right, if you go back and you look at, okay, if you go back and you look, okay, here's another story that came out just a week prior to that. Okay, August 30th, 2012, okay, China and Germany plan to settle more trade in yuan and euros. Germany and China plan to conduct an increasing amount of their trade in euros and yuan. The two nations said in a joint statement after talks, okay, 
Right. Both sides intend to support financial institutions and companies of both countries in the use of the rem, renminbi and euro in bilateral trade and investments. Okay, that is incredible. So China's interbank bond market by German banks, aboard the settlement business in the yuan by German and Chinese banks. Okay, so Germany and China are going to be conducting more trade, trade in oil without using the U.S. dollar. And this has just only happened within the last two, three weeks. Okay, so more and more we're starting to see countries move away from the petrodollar trade. And that's going to put the U.S. dollar, that's going to put some serious downward pressure on the U.S. dollar. That's going to put the U.S. economy in a lot of trouble, folks. Okay, so um, I just want to, you know, talk with you about that. Um, cover the petro dollar trade. I mean, when you think about it all this time, come on, you knew when you saw a chart like this, you know, and every one of these is a U.S. military base. You instinctively knew that something wasn't right. You know that we're not that rich of a country to be able to afford that. No country can afford that. How would we afford? And this is just looking at this small section. If you look at the U.S. military bases worldwide, it's insane. How could we afford that much, that many U.S. military bases worldwide? How can we afford this many military bases just around Iran? How, how, you know, oh, oh, you know, you think that you're a good, hardworking. Most most Americans are hardworking and they got a job and they pay their taxes, and that's how. Really, really, come on. We don't even have enough money to fund our own social security system, let alone something like this. All of this was made possible from the petrodollar trade, which has allowed the Federal Reserve and the bankers to literally print money, okay, because the demand for the dollar will always be there because of the petrodollar trade in oil, okay? And that's how this took place. So there it is, guys. I want to get the information to you. Just try to report the facts without getting too crazy or into some kind of conspiracy stuff that go way off the top. I just wanted to report to you the facts, the numbers, and what's going on. Because I think, you know, you just want to be very careful as traders and we make our money in the markets. This doesn't mean you shouldn't be in the market. This doesn't mean you can't make money in the market. But you guys are starting to see why. I like JB system so much because it's oversold, right? You're looking for a stock that's already sold off, okay? Number two, you're looking for short interest, sky high, right? That there's going to be a short squeeze bound. So you've got this double kind of profit thesis levels where you've got an oversold stock, you've got the short interest too high, and the short guys are going to, you look up the short interest, and by looking at the short interest, you're also knowing what you're knowing the buy side demand that's going to take place in that stock you see and so that's that's guaranteed buy side demand that you know that's coming by looking at the short interest okay because you know people that are short of stock they have to buy the stock back to cover the short okay and and then you set a definable stop loss perhaps at the first day of the candle over candle pattern Okay, or if it flushed, then the low of the day that the stock flushed. And if you're wrong, you get the heck out as quickly as possible. You're only going for these little 5 to 10% moves, and then you're out as fast as possible. You guys see why I like that defensive strategy so much? I mean, with this kind of stuff going on, to me, to me, buy and hold is dead. Now, unless you're attempting to play this in gold and silver, that's a completely different ballgame. Okay, that's why I like commodities, okay? However, however, most oil transactions are actually conducted still with the U.S. dollar. And so the demand for the U.S. dollar is still sky high, okay? That's why we're not seeing runaway inflation with all the expansion of the M2 and the M3 money supply that we've seen over the last four, five, six, seven years, okay? So that... So that could that could continue further. So you know you you know you, you know don't panic, but but do this do this. Keep your eyes on my blog. Keep your eyes coming to my Wall Street TV because 
I'm following the petrodollar trade, you guys. As soon as I get, like those last two news stories that I showed you over the last three and four weeks, as soon as I get a news story with another country dropping the petro oil trade, dropping the U.S. dollar as the mechanism for trading oil, okay, I will let you know. That's what we have to watch. That's what we have to keep our eyes on, okay? All right. Love you guys. Hope I didn't freak you out or scare you too much, okay? Um, you know, it's it's just the world that, that we live in, and, and, and as traders, we need to know everything that's going on as much as possible. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for listening, and talk with you soon.